These lenses are some of the most underrated lenses that I've seen reviewed on YouTube. I actually haven't even seen tons of reviews on them. Not entirely sure why. And in the anamorphic space, they really check off most boxes, at least for me personally. My name's Anthony and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, it's great seeing you. If you're not, you know that we talk a lot about gear, cinematography tips and lighting tutorials, but today it's gonna be about gear, specifically this anamorphic lens set that isn't talked about enough. If you're new to anamorphic lenses, there are tons of resources on YouTube. I won't really go too much into that for this one, but basically these lenses squeeze your image and when you de-squeeze them, you get all these interesting characteristics like swirly bokeh or elongated bokeh, flares, different characteristics that for the longest time, I didn't realize I was even seeking after. I would see these anamorphic characteristics in my favorite movies, but I could never really put my finger on why I liked the images that I was seeing. And while this is a journey that most people spend years embarking on, I really think I found a set that meets all of my needs and it's not just image wise. They're definitely not perfect. They have a good amount of quirks and some of them aren't even anamorphic quirks that most people look for. They're just annoying quirks. So we will talk about that later on in the video, but I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Here's what you're gonna get in this video. First, we're gonna talk about the most important part about these lenses or any lenses really, and that's its image its characteristics, its barrel distortion or pin cushion, flares, and the overall look of each of these lenses. And then we'll go over its usability because oddly enough, anamorphic lenses are quirky and some are really hard to use, some are really easy to use. So we'll go over where this lens set fits in that bracket. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over why I personally think these lenses are an incredible value. I'm actually filming this entire talking head with the 50 millimeter anamorphic lens of the set. So unfortunately, I haven't been too busy with my production company. I wish I was shooting every single day or at least every other day, but I haven't gotten too many jobs, let alone jobs that warrant me using these anamorphic lenses in a more critical situation. So I did what I know how to do best and that's set up a lighting scenario with my newborn baby. So a lot of the images that you'll be seeing are of my boy Ezra and hope you enjoy. When these lenses first came out, I really thought they were too good to be true. It was around the time when Sure was coming out with 1.6x anamorphic lenses, the bigger ones, and they had their quirks. And then this company that has made some interesting lenses in the past, Great Joy, came out with a 1.8 times anamorphic lens, which completely trumps its competitors. And I still think to this day for the price range, trumps anything that's on the market. The lenses do have that anamorphic waterfall-esque bokeh. And what's most interesting about these lenses is the way they flare. Some of them don't even flare at all, but the ones that do, which is the 50 and the 85, flare very, very subtly. The 50 millimeter flares the most, and I wish all the lenses in the set flared the way the 50 millimeter does because it really is so pleasing. The amber flares are just tasty. The 85 millimeter is a good bit harder to get to flare. And then the 35 is almost impossible to make flare. And this is something that's actually really desired and really only happens when you spend a lot of money on anamorphics. Another thing about these lenses that vintage enthusiasts or cinematographers might think is a con is how sharp they are completely wide open. That is not something you're gonna find on most anamorphic lenses that actually have character. And the ones that are sharp are lacking a good amount of character in my opinion. So I would venture to say that these lenses are pleasantly sharp. But if I could sum it all up into one sentence, I would say that these Great Joy 1.8 times anamorphics are anamorphic enough to where I wouldn't be desiring or wanting to buy an Atlas Orion set of anamorphic lenses. They're pretty close to two times anamorphic, and I wouldn't say that they have that crazy anamorphic look that you would get in an $8,000 lens, but you could create a lot of these things in post, adding barrel distortion, weird things happening in the edges, and even softening up your image if you so desire. I'm not sure if that fully articulates how I feel about these lenses, but they really are good enough. And that means a lot when it comes to anamorphic because they're 
tons of trash options out there that just, in my opinion, aren't good. Out of all the lenses, my favorite one is the 50, just because it, to me, it seems more versatile. The 35 gets used for wides because when you have a 1.8 times stretch, even when you're cropping in for a two to four one aspect ratio, it's pretty wide. And then the 85 is the most beautiful lens out of the entire set, but I don't find myself using that focal length as often. Even though it has a field of view, more of that of a 50, I still don't find myself using it as much as the 50. If you have any other questions regarding the image characteristics, feel free to comment them below and I'll make sure to get them. Now for these lenses, usability, which when you're talking about anamorphic lenses is almost as important as its image characteristics because most anamorphic lenses are not easy to use whatsoever. Whether it's the focusing distances, the constant squeeze ratios, mumps, anamorphic lenses usually require a little more TLC when you're shooting with them. So how easy are these lenses to use? Well, when it comes to anamorphic lenses, I think they are some of the easiest set of lenses that you can use. The 35 and the 85 have constant squeeze ratios, so you don't have to worry about that. The 50 unfortunately doesn't, which is kind of a toss up because it is my favorite lens, but I do have to deal with this variable squeeze ratio, variable squeeze, variable squeeze, variable squeeze ratio that's a little annoying. And it's probably one of the biggest quirks of this set, to be honest. The focus rings are really smooth. The aperture rings have a good amount of tension, which is how I prefer it. I prefer to have my aperture ring to have more tension than my focus ring. Like any normal cinema lens, their focus and aperture gears are in the same exact spot. I would say that the tension on each of the lenses are kind of the same. It's not really a bother for me, but I figured I would mention it. The caps are nice. The rear mounts are really solid, and I like that you can convert it from PL to EF, and it comes in the kit. But all that to say, they are some of the easiest lenses to use when it comes to anamorphics. If they were to fix that variable squeeze ratio in the 50 millimeter, I would think they are the easiest lenses to use. Another quirk I found with these lenses, and it's just the way that they're designed, is you will get vignetting on them when you use almost any filter in front of the lens. If you're shooting open gate, the 35 will have vignetting no matter what. Interestingly enough, I found that the adapter I use affects it greatly. I'm actually using PL to L adapters from C7 adapters, and those had the least amount of vignetting and had the best build quality I've ever felt in an adapter. So if you're looking for really solid adapters, I would check out C7 adapters. They're the ones that I've used that have the least amount of quirks and negative effects to my image. They're not the lightest, but I would take a 1.8 times stretch anamorphic lens that just looks more anamorphic than a 1.6 times one that, a little normal. The biggest selling factor of these lenses is that they are easy to use. They have most of the characteristics that you would look for in an anamorphic lens. And then it leads me to my last point is that they are extremely affordable, especially now. I don't know if this sale is gonna last forever, but right now <laughs> it's ridiculous how cheap these lenses cost. So right now on b &H, this set of three lenses, the 35, 50, and 85 in PL and EF is $3,243, which comes out to a little over $1,000 per lens. And that's stupid. That's crazy. I could be wrong, but apart from their Kickstarter price, they were around $1,700, $1,800. And even that was ridiculously cheap. I feel like there's a lot of things I could say about these lenses and I could go a lot more in depth, but I have a newborn baby in the other room. A lot of things been going on. I've been trying to just pump this video out or it would just never happen. But I do have some exciting videos in the future. There's one video specifically that I've been itching to make for a month now. I'm actually gonna be comparing some tripods. This is the new Suray one. I have the Sackler Flotec and the Small Rig one. Comment down below again if you have any questions whatsoever because I know I didn't go super in depth and scientific into this and I'd love to get back to you. As well as if you're a company that would like to collaborate with this YouTube channel, shoot me a message and we can talk. I love talking about anamorphic lenses, but that's all for this video and I will see you in the next one.